Hey, Rob. Hello, Martin. How are Hi, you? Rob. Baruch Hashem. How are you, Rob? Shavua Tov. How are you Shavua all? Tov. Shavua Tov. Are you all well? Baruch Hashem. Good, 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 good. What's news? What's news? Give me news. No, nothing. <laughs> no news in That's Africa not... is good news. No news in the Middle East is good news. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so tonight, as I promised on Tuesday, Be'ezrat Hashem, we're going to speak about uh, Birkat Kohanim, the priesthood blessing. We'll try and understand a little bit more about the priesthood blessing. Uh, we have, I see that already, our friend Jeffrey with us is a coin. Hilton is a coin. I see that Lionel Pogo with us, also a Kohen, three Kohanim, can you believe it? I'm sure that there's more Kohanim going to join us soon. So, tonight, Be'ezrat Hashem, we'll speak about the blessing of the Kohanim. Let's see what we know. There's a lot of halachot into it. I took mainly the most important one, and Be'ezrat Hashem, we'll try to study together. So, we'll give another few more minutes for more people to join us. Hilton, how are we doing? How are we feeling? Is Hilton can hear me? Hilton, how are you feeling? I can hear you. Ah, Baruch Hashem. Can you hear me? I can hear your voice. Yeah. Ah, okay. No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. The good. reason there's so many Quran in with you today is because we want to check up to see if you know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, now, here's now. Look who's coming now. Anthony is also a Kohen. So uh, we have already four see. Kohanim. Can you believe it? Four Kohanim uh, in the show. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. So um, we're going to start the show. Be'ezrat Hashem, na'asev natsliyah, ve'ashem alenu berahamav yarviyah. Okay, I would like to delegate the show in the memory of Esther Kaden Bat Ketsia, Leora Bat Miri, eh, Mordechai Ben Rahma, Arab Ram Ben Haim, Eleazar Yaakov, Tamar Bat Zehava, Yaakov Salomon, Ben Parha, Dvora Ruth, Bat Beila, Shosha Blima, Bat Mordechai Betzalel, Malka Regina, Bat Joya, Keti Gurgia, Bat Parha, Mishmatam, Tiet Shvora, Betzorahim. Also, I would like to delegate the Shaul. <coughs> In health of Menashe Naji Ben Farha, Leora Bat Miriam, Harav Moshe Ben Baia Batia, Harav Moshe Ben Devora, Harav Avram Ben Marina, Harav Shlomo Yehuda Ben Dalia, Dvora Bat Esther, Ahuva Kaden Bat Tali Esther, Orna Bluma Bat Miriam, Sheina Keila Bat Hana, Mordechai David Ben Lea, Haim Nahum Akohen Ben Pesareza, Baruch Ben Sara Tzvi Ben Hava, Shmuel Meir Ben Shosha Blima, Miriam Zel Bat Zel Daliba, Moshe Avram Ben Henariva, Haya Tzipora Bat Rahel, Ayala Eden Bat Rivka, Vetov Aliba Bat Rahel, Veyoshua Haim Ben Haya Lea. Please God refuah shlema to all of them. בעזרת השם, רפואה שלמה to all of them, וכל חולה ופצועי עמו בית ישראל. אוקיי, okay, ברכת כהנים. ברכת כהנים, רבותיי, it's a מצווה תעשה, it's a positive command from the Torah, that the כהנים have to bless the children of Israel, the Jewish people, in the name of the Almighty. That's ברכת כהנים. Where's the source for it? A matter of fact, there is two sources for ברכת כהנים. The first source we can find in Sefer Baikra in Parashat Shmini, in chapter 9, verse 22, and there it said, Vaisa Aaron et Yadav el Am. Rashi Vaisa Aaron et Yadav el Am, Vaivarchem. Rashi Akadosh, Rashi Akadosh on the Otis, explained, the Rashi say that referring to Birkat Kohanim. That means that the first source we're learning from Sefer Vaikra. The second source, and that's the main source that we all know, it's what we, learn, what we read 
in Chumash Bamidbar this Shabbos. This Shabbos we read Parashat Nason. In chapter 6, verse 24, uh, verse 20, 23, 24, 25, and 26, if I'm not mistaken, there it says, Kotevarhu et Bene Israel. Okay, the Almighty asked Moshe Rabenu to tell Aharon and his children that they're obligating to bless the children of Israel. Who are those that obligated to bless the children of Israel? So on a Pshat of Dvarim, it's a mitzvah from the Oraita that even today that Bet Amikdash <coughs> not exist, today that Bet Amikdash not exist, which is the Kohanim still obligated to bless the children of Israel. They have a mitzvah tase from the Torah that although that Bet Amikdash not exist, they're still obligated to bless the Kohanim. Who they are the, uh, obligated? Anyone from the descendants of Aaron Kohen. That's mean, in our simple language, whoever know that he's a Kohen, he's a proper Kohen. I saw a beautiful commentary that brought by Rabbi Elazar Askari. Rabbi Elazar Askari, he born in Tzfat around 490 years ago. He wrote the book Sefer Haredim. And he bring a beautiful Hidush. And he say like this, listen to that Hidush, what he say, who's the people that can be obligated also for Birkat Kohanim. And he say in Seder Mitzvot, he got there according to the organ of the body in chapter 12, verse 18, he say like this, listen what he said. He said that not only the Kohanim fulfill that mitzvah of blessing the children of Israel, also, when a Jewish person that is not a Kohen standing up quietly and listen to Kohanim and have the Kavana, he have listen and he have the mind set on the blessing that the Kohanim bless the children of Israel. Okay, he's considered like he fulfilled mitzvah asef from the Torah. Can you believe it? Now I would like to go, what is the reason behind Birkat Kohanim? Why is the Kohanim have to bless the, ch the children of Israel? So the Rambam, the Rambam is Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon. Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, born in the city of Cordova, as you all know, he born around 888 years ago. In his book, uh, The Guide for the Perplex, okay, that was a great, uh, it's a great philosophic book and a book of Emunah, and Almighty in uh, volume three, in chapter 44. Listen what he said. By that, that the Kohanim bless us, we merit to understand that's mean that when the Kohanim bless the Jewish people, we understand that the source for all the bracha, to all the prosperity in the world, okay? And the source to all the life in the world come from the Almighty. And not only that, he said, bilvad, only from the Almighty. And he continued and said, and mehazeket et ha'emunah bebora olam. That means the blessing of the birkat kohanim, not only that to allow the Jewish people to understand that, the source for all the brocha, the source for all the life come from the Almighty. Listen what he said. He said that it brings the emuna in every human being, in every Jewish, when he see, when he stand, and he listen to Birkat Kohanim to understand and to believe in the Almighty. Rabbi Aaron Alevi, Rabbi Aaron Alevi, born in a city of Gorondia. Gorondia is a city in Spain. He born around 788 years ago. He born 100, and, uh, 100 years after the, the, the Rambam. Okay? And he wrote Sefer Ahinuch. You all hear about Sefer Ahinuch in Mitzvah 378. Listen what he said. He said that the main reason, now why is the Kohanim, why is the Kohanim been chosen to bless the Jewish people, why Dafkadem? Why not the Bechorot? 
Why no one else? Why not the Levim? Why Dafka the Kohanim? He said, because the Kohanim been chosen to serve in Beta Mikdash. And the reason for it that they've been chosen because they saw of a Kohen, it's connected to the fear of the Almighty. And because of that, he can bless the Jewish people. Dafka him that have this connection to the Almighty, this special connection, he can bless the Jewish people. The ultra Rebbe, that means Admor Azaken, Rabbi Shneur Zalman Miladi. He was the first uh, Rebbe that started the movement of Chabad. He born in Belarus around 278 years ago. And he wrote in his book on Likute Torah, the book called Likute Torah, on Parashat Korah, he explained that the main reason that the Kohanim been chosen to bless the Jewish people, he given a different opinion. He said, because the Kohanim and Manshe Hesed, they are people of kindness. They have mercy. And because of that, they can draw down, they can bring down from heaven to us a spiritual prosperity and a physical prosperity. That means that because they special people that have compassion, okay, and Anshe Hesed, that means that they have the ability because they kindness to bring the prosperity down to us to bless the Jewish people. What is the Nusa? Okay, of the bracha of Birkat Kohanim. So if we look at it, the Birkat Kohanim, first of all, we have to understand that it's split to three. Three different brachot, or three different sections, you call it. And there is 60 letters in Birkat Kohanim that we will explain what's hiding behind. So what is the Nusa? Yevarechecha Hashem v'yishmerecha. Ya'er Hashem pana velecha v'yihuneka. Isa Hashem panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom. Okay, those are the three parts of the brocha. Before the Kohanim <coughs> going to Duchen, they have a mitzvah number one to wash their head. Okay, it's a mitzvah that the Levi will see now in Alacho that he must wash the Kohen head. But there is also another mitzvah that the Kohen, the Kohen have to take his shoes. Why is it so important that the Kohanim will take their shoes and they go to bless the Jewish people? So many people come and say the idea that because the Kohanim used to serve in Bet Amikdash, they used to serve bare feet. Okay, that's in Bet Amikdash. But today that we don't have Bet Amikdash, inculcation, there is no connection. It has nothing to do one with each other. So I'm going to bring two different ideas. Why do we have to take the, the, sorry, why the Kohanim have to take, not we. Why the Kohanim have to take their shoes before they go up to the Bima to bless the Jewish people. So the main reason that Hazal explained that Mishum Kavod Abriot, Kavod Atibur, okay? What does it mean? that if you see a coin walking with the shoes, we don't know where he walked. He maybe stood on the mud, stood on something smelly. And imagine that he st started standing up and went to bless with mentioning the name of the Almighty with the smelly shoes, with the smelly something underneath, mud, who know what kind of mud. It's not, it's not appropriate to stand and to bless the Jewish people. Has Shalom, the shoes is not clean. That's the one idea. The other idea, the halakhically idea for it, Rabotai, why does the Kohen have to take his shoes, okay, or his sandals, or his slip slop, whatever the case is. The Kohen can go up with his socks, okay, to the bima and to bless the children of Israel. So the halakhically reason behind it, that if the coin walk with his shoes and for some reason the strap or the laces of the shoes are open, 
okay? And suddenly he found out while he's busy duchening, he's gonna be so worried that people are gonna look at him because he's up. He's gonna start going down to tie his shoelaces or to put the strips of the sandal properly. And he's gonna be missing, and he's gonna be missing the blessing the children of Israel with the other Kohanim. And then, those that get blessed will see that he is busy tying his shoelace or fixing up the straps of his sandal. They will say most probably who pasul. What it mean pasul? He doesn't have the right to go up to the duchen. So what he did he done? He pretend that he's tying his shoelace. He's pretending that he's busy with the strip of the sandal. So not to cause any hashash, hashash is any doubt that has shalom will be on that coin. Come hazal and constitute for us. Nachon that today Bet HaMikdash not exist. Nachon that you don't have to do it bare feet like they used to do it and Bet HaMikdash. But at least, at least take your shoes off, okay? And you can stay with your socks and then you can bless the children of Israel, then you can do her. So that's the two reasons, the main two reasons why the Kohanim have to take the shoes off before they bless the Jewish people. Now I would like to go, like we explained earlier, we said the Nusa of the Bracha, and now we're gonna go in depth to understand each part of the Bracha. We said that the Birkat Kohanim have 60 letters on it. What is the secret behind it? So the Mekubalim explained that those 60 letters is for protection of the Jewish people, to guard and to protect and to bless the Jewish people, number one, in protection, number two, in prosperity. What does it mean? Shira Shirim been written by Shlomo Amelech in chapter three, Verse seven and verse eight, it says, Shishim Giborim, 60 strong men surrounding the bed of Shlomo Amelech. Shishim Giborim, Sviv Lamitato Shel Shlomo. What does it mean? Hazal said that after Shlomo Amelech been kicked out from his kingdom for three years, okay, he was very scared and very worried. He couldn't sleep. Why? Because the master, the king, the Satan himself, kicked him out. He was worried. So he took 60 righteous people, okay, with sword. There's a symbol for the sword. It's not just for string, okay, that they guard his bed that he can sleep in peace at night. Because he have a nightmare from it. Come and say, Hazar, there's 60 letters here that represent what Shlomo Amelech need to be guard from who? From the evil forces. So when the Kohanim blessed the Jewish people, they blessed them with 60 letters. Why those 60 letters? That to bless us, to guard us from anything that can be spiritual harm, that cause spiritual harm, and physical harm. And that's why there is 60 letters and Birkat Kohanim, the Mekubalim explained. Okay, now that we explained that, I would like to start moving and explaining and explaining each part of Birkat Kohanim. We say that the Birkat Kohanim have three parts. And we start with part one, we explain it, and then we'll move slowly, slowly to the other part. <clears throat> Sorry. The first part of the blessing is Yevarechecha Hashem Vishmerecha. What's hiding behind it? Rashi Akadosh, Rabbi Shlomo Yitzhaki. Rabbi Shlomo Yitzhaki, born in the city of Troa. Troa, it's in north of France. He born 983 years ago. And he says like this, that when the Kohanim standing and the blessing the Jewish people, when they say Yevarechecha, what it means, Yevarechecha, that the Almighty will bless you. Bless you with what? We have to understand. 
חז"ל עושה באושר וממון וחיים. עצמי נאמבר וואן אושר באלף, what it mean אושר באלף, happiness, okay, life, good life, and then אושר בעין, what it mean בעין, prosperity, that means that the Almighty will bless his children, the Jewish people, number one, with good life, number two, with wealth, and then it says, וישמרך, רש"י הקדוש say, what it mean וישמרך, that the Almighty will guard you, guard you from whom? Number one, from robbers, okay? That when people see that someone have money, usually the robbers go there. He said that the Almighty will guard you, that the robbers not going to come near you. But he said not only that, it said from any spiritual harm that can happen. What is that spiritual harm that we're talking? That sometimes people see a person done well. You know, he wasn't very successful. Suddenly he done well in his life. Prosperity, he done very well. Come and say, Rashi, that protect you from what? From the evil eye. So when the Kohanim bless the children of Israel, they bless us that to have good life, to have us a beautiful life, to have also prosperity. Vishmerecha, that the Almighty will guard you from what? Number one, from robbers. And he will guard you from any spiritual harm that can cause by it. Rabbi Yaakov Baal Turim, he born in Germany around 754 years ago. And in his commentary, he explained that the first blessing, the first part of the blessing of Birkat Kohanim is in the merit of Abraham Avinu. Watch the connection. He said like this, he said in Sefer Bereshit, in the book of Bereshit, in Parashat Lech Lecha, in chapter 12, verse 3, what did the Almighty say to Avraham Avinu? Ve'avabcha mevarechecha. What does it mean? HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to Avraham Avinu, those that are going to bless you, I'm going to bless them. Come, Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim and say, that here there is a brocha that we say Yevarechecha. Yevarechecha, that means in the merit of Abraham Avinu. That the first part of the brocha is from Abraham Avinu. Okay. Who is the first brocha, the first part of the brocha speak? Because we say that there is three parts to Birkat Kohanim. The first part of the brocha, who does mainly speak to? I found that it speaks generally to all the Jewish people, but it mainly speaks to those people that have to go and work physically. That the Almighty will bring him brocha and atzlaha in their business and the work that they do, whatever they work on. I found that it generally to every Jew, but mainly to those that go to work. The second part of Birkat Kohanim, it says, Ya'er Hashem panav elecha v'yehuneka. Okay? If you look carefully, in this second part of the brocha, there is five words. Hazal explained that you know why there is five words? It's a word, the five book of Moses. And there is a secret here. Hazal explained that those five words towards the five book of Moses, that we will, that here the Kohanim bless the Jewish people, that they will understand the secret of the Torah, the secret behind the five books of Moses. Not only that, that we should learn Torah, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will open our eyes to understand the secret of the Torah. Come Rabbeinu Yaakov Baal Aturi. And he said that the second part of the brocha is in the merit of who? It's Hakavim. Why Dafka, the second brocha? He said, I'll tell you why. 
because it said that Yitzhak Avinu, he was like, uh, he'd been taken to the altar as a sacrifice, as a korban. And he was korban raui. He was a korban that was deserved, like a korban, like an animal that was kosher to go on top of the altar. He said, in the merit of that, we say, Ya'er Hashem Pana Velecha, that he was bringing the light on you. What does it mean it's bringing the light of you? That HaKadosh Baruch Hu explaining the, the, the commentary explain that here we asking the Almighty that this Bocha mainly for Talmidei Hachamim. Although it's for the old in generally for all the Jewish people, but it's mainly for Talmidei Hachamim. Why? That HaKadosh Baruch Hu will open the eyes and will reveal for them, okay, the secret of the Torah, that there can be more wisdom and they will remember what they study that can uplift themselves in Yiddishkeit and they can be scholar person. And that's what it means, Ya'er Hashem, okay, that the Almighty will open his, his glory into you, the Yehoneka, and he's going to give you what we call in English, um, hen. Hen is uh, favoritism. That means he will give you favoritism, that you will remember your study and you'll understand the secret of the Torah. The third part of Birkat Kohanim that we have to understand, there it says, Isa Hashem Pana Ve'elecha Ve'yasem Lecha Shalom. Now if we look carefully, this brocha has seven words. So remember, we start the first brocha evarcha Hashem v'yishmerecha, three. Then we jump to five. Then we jump to seven, okay? What is the secret behind it? So why Dafka seven? So the Mepharshim explained like this. Listen to what the Mekubalim say. That this blessing, these seven words, you know why seven words? Awards the seven heaven that where the Almighty sit in heaven. Okay? And that's the source, this is how the Mekubalim explain, to all the blessing, to all the prosperity. Okay? In heaven, that the Almighty bring down to us. That means we go step by step. We start in three, we start in five. And now we move into seven. Why Dafka seven? That in the final brocha, we bring in not only prosperity, we're not bringing only wisdom. Now we bring in also something new. What are we bringing? Look what it says. Now we're talking about peace. That means that in the final part of the brocha, we asking Akadosh Baruch Hu that we ask for prosperity, spiritual and physical. Then we ask that we will understand the Torah, that Akadosh Baruch Hu will give us the wisdom, okay, and the ability to understand the secret of the Torah. In a seven blessing, in a, sorry, in a third part of the blessing, that there is seven words. Here we're asking Akadosh Baruch Hu not only for all of that, above all of that, to get peace, to have peace. And we'll see it just now, we'll explain it. That means that from the seven heaven, all those blessings are going to come to us include peace. Say Rabbi Yaakov Baal that this, the third part of the Birkat Kohanim, is in the merit of Yaakov Avinu. So what do we learn from here? We learn something very important, that the Birkat Kohanim is in the merit of the fourth father. Why that part of the bracha is in the merit of Yaakov Avinu? Say Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim, because in Parashat Toldot, in Sefer Bereshit, okay, in chapter 29, verse 1, it says, Vaisa Yaakov Raglav, okay? That means Yaakov now going to a journey, okay? But he need protection. Here we also need protection. Rashi Akadosh explained something extraordinary. 
that here, that the same like the Almighty promise Yaakov Avinu that He will guard him and protect him. Okay, the Mefarshim explained that this Brocha that Akadosh Baruch Hu promised Yaakov Avinu to protect him and to guard him. This Brocha is specifically for the member of the security force, the member of the defense force of the Jewish people. Okay to protect them and to guard them from any enemies. So if you look at that and you look at Birkat Kohanim and you divide it to three, you understand that each brocha is for different people that there is in a Jewish nation. Those that go to the army, those that go to war, the same like was all the time in a Jewish history. All the time they have people that been chosen to go to war, they, they're soldiers. Then there is always the scholar person that sit and steer the Torah. Then there is the first brocha that speak and bless everyone individually and physical and spiritual prosperity. So if we look at that, we see something very important that the Birkat Kohanim, there is all the blessing that the person needs. If you need Bene, Haye, Umzone. What it means Bene is children. Haye is life. Mezone is food. Everything that you need, there is in Birkat Kohanim. If you need children, that physical. Then Haye, that it's life, like we say at the beginning, good life, and mezone, and food. Everything is here. Spiritual food and physical food. Spiritual kids, okay, and physical kids. Because it can't be kids without phys that they're not physical, that they're not alive. And life, to have a life that they are full of spirituality, but also physical life that we can live. Because without that, we can't. Do. And that's what hiding behind Birkat Kohanim. I would like to speak now about the movement that the Kohanim have to do to explain what movement and the Kohanim obviously know it, but for us, we try to understand. While the Kohanim standing in a Bima, when they're going up to Duchen, and they're standing to do him, there is a special thing that there is certain time that they move to the right, there is certain time that they move to the left, and there is certain time that they don't move, not to the left, not to the right. They can shuho, okay, but they can't move to the left, they can't move to the right. That's what we call it standing still, okay? Some people call it standing still. So I'm gonna explain it like this. When we start the Birkat Kohanim, we say Yevarechecha, okay? That we say that the Almighty will bless you. We, who did they speak to? To us. Whenever they speak to us, here the Kohanim have to turn to the right hand side and then to the left hand side. That means when they're standing, they stretch the arm like this. They have to turn to the right and then to the left. Okay, that was my right, but for you, this is the right, this is the left. They have to turn to both of the side to bless the children of Israel. When they mention the name of the Almighty Hashem, they have to stand still. They're not moving. When they mentioning again Vishmerecha, that they're referring to the Jewish people, again, they're turning to the right and turning to the left. And the same with the second brocha, it say Ya'er. Ya'er, they're referring to the Almighty, they're not allowed to move. Hashem, Panab, they're not allowed to move. When it say Elecha, again, they're turning to the right and to the left. And again, when it's come to the final brocha, Isa, Hashem, Panab, Elecha, they're moving. Yasem, they moving. Lecha shalom. Yasem, they're not moving. Lecha shalom. They're moving from the right to the left. What is the secret behind all of it? 
those the movement of the Kohanim. We have to understand why is the Kohanim, when they stretch their hand, they have to move to the right and to the left. What is the, what is the days behind it? I saw a beautiful commentary that I heard from Arab Zamir Kohen Shalita, Arab Zamir Kohen. And he explained like this, that the hand of the Kohanim, it's like a sprinkler system. What does it mean the sprinkler system? That when the Kohanim bless the Jewish people, they get a spiritual light that came to their finger. And from that, from their finger, they actually bringing that prosperity, the physical and the spiritual prosperity. And that's basically the sprinkling on all the Jewish people. That means that special light, that it's a special energy of spiritual and physical energy. That means what we call it prosperity. They're actually spreading on all of us when they turn to the right and to the left. And where does it come from? It's coming through the fingers. And that's the secret behind the movement, that when they move, they're actually basically sprinkling on us all that spirit special blessing that come from heaven. Now, I'm going to speak about certain laws. Most of them, I'm sure that you know all of them, but it's for me to learn with you. Okay, the Birkat Kohanim have to, have to say Beleshon HaKodesh, which means in Hebrew. That means the Kohanim have to say the bracha in Hebrew and they have to say it loudly that everyone can hear. Okay? The blessing of the Kohanim have to be said by the Kohanim while they're standing up. The obligation for the children of Israel, for the congregation, they don't have halakhically obligation to stand up. They can sit. But the Kohanim have to stand up when they say the Brocha. Why? Because the entire power, the entire energy that's coming from heaven, going on them, and the connecting between the Almighty and us. They're the connection. Therefore, they have to stand up. Nahon today is the Minhag. It's the custom that even the congregation standing up. The Mishnah Brura is a Shailah is a Kohen that is a handicap and he can't stand by himself, okay? He needs something to hold him. Hazal said that if you need a stick or something to help him to stand up, he cannot go to Duchen. He's not allowed to go up. I saw a leniency regarding sitting, okay? that in Birkat Kohanim, the Tzitz Eliezer, the Tzitz Eliezer was Rabbi Eliezer Yehuda Volberg. He born in Jerusalem around 107 years ago. He wrote that book, Tzitz Eliezer. It's a book of Shailot which you bought. It's a Lachakli book. And he born in Jerusalem. And he said like this, that if member of the congregation not feeling well, Oh, he's an old person, but it's difficult for him to ask him to stand up for the Birkat Kohanim. He can sit while the Kohanim do him, adore the custom that the congregation to stand up. Okay, the Birkat Kohanim have to say in a minion. What it mean, minion? At least 10 people that there is. Okay, that's been passed by the Shulchan Aruch in Siman Kuf Kaf 128. Verse, verse, uh, if I'm not mistaken, verse eight, okay. What does it mean, Minyan? Minyan, it include those Kohanim that blessing the congregation. That means if there is one Kohen and nine other members that they're not Kohanim, together they're Minyan, then you do Birkat Kohanim. That's considered Minyan. Okay. The Birkat Kohanim, we say that have to be said, okay, in a minya. What about regarding that the Birkat Kohanim, where they're saying it, there's no Sefer Torah. There's no Sefer Torah. 
can they say it? For example, if people daven, there is a big shul, and there is different section in shuls, that there is different minyanim, like a shtibla. Can they say where there is no Sefer Torah, where they're standing to bless the congregation? Yes, they can say it, although that there is no Sefer Torah. That's how been Paskin in a Mishnah Bura, if people want to see it, Siman Kuf Kafhet, verse 2. What's happened that when is the, after the Kohanim ready, when is it the time for them to start going towards the Bima? Okay, to start approaching towards the Bima. It's in Birkat Ritze, in Amida, in Hazarat Ashats. Okay, that, that they, in Hazarat Ashats, they have to get ready now to start moving towards the Bima, the Abad. If a person didn't start walking at the beginning, even in the end, towards the end of the brocha, I can still continue um, to walk towards the bima to start going up, to start preparing himself to bless the Jewish people. Where is the source for it that the, the Kohanim have to prepare themselves and not in the last minute to work? So Hazal bringing the source for it from what it says in the Gemara and Masechet Sotain, page 38, folio 2. It says, okay, raglav. what it means, okay, raglav? and he start to lift up his leg, he start moving, okay, from the place that he was standing. Okay. Now, when the Kohanim bless, the, when they do Birkat Kohanim, when they do him, when they bless the congregation, and I mentioned it a number of times, Rabotai, it have to make sure that the Kohanim, the hand is stretched and the height of their shoulder and the right hand a little bit upper than the left hand. Why is that? The Mekubalim explain that the Yad Yamin, the right hand is Hesed, while the left hand is Dinim, Gvurot, what do we do? The Kohanim bring in more chesed, more kindness into the world by that, that they're lifting up the right hand a little bit above the left hand, just like this. Doesn't have to be like this. No, just like this. Why? To bring chesed to the world. Okay? When the Kohanim bless the Jewish people, Sorry, before that, there's another question in, 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 uh, in the Mepharshim, I almost forgot. If there is a coin that is shaking, you know, you have Parkinson, and he doesn't have the strength, okay, to keep them straight or to lift them up, he mustn't go and bless the Jewish people. He cannot go up. Why? Because we explain that the broch are coming through the finger, through the hand. That means they like sprinklers of broch. And when they turn to the right, when they turn to the left, they basically sprinkle us on us those special energy that came from the seventh heaven. Therefore, if his hand shaking and he can't keep them up in the height of the shoulder, that coin should not go in place. Okay. Now, when the Kohanim do the Birkat Kohanim, the Kohanim Duchen, what is us as Jewish people should be and where we should stand up? Lehatchila, we should stand up right in the front of the Kohanim. On the side, like there is shul, if you take Yeshiva College, for example, you know, there's the chair and the table coming towards the side of the Bima with the Kohanim Duchen. And that's why they have to go to the side. The most important that the members doesn't stand behind, behind the Kohanim. I know that they stand on the side and the Kohanim can't turn their hand to him, he get blessed. Okay? If a person in Birkat Kohanim turn his back to the Kohanim, he doesn't benefit from the Birkat Kohanim. Rabotai, when there is Birkat Kohanim, 
the member of the congregate, okay, the congregation should look at uh, uh, to stand straight to the Kohanim. Now, while the Kohanim doing the Duchanim, people, the congregate should cover their face or close their eyes. They should not look at the hand of the Kohanim. I'm saying the hand of the Kohanim. Why? Because we say that the hand of the Kohen, that's when the energy, the special prosperity come, and from that, that's the sprinkle. Hazal in the Gemara, in Masechet Hagiga, remember, 16, folio, folio 1, Hazal say that there is three things that cause a person to lose his eyesight. One of them is a person that look at the Kohanim when a person look at the Kohanim, the hand of the Kohanim when they do doing the blessing. Why? That energy can harm the eyes. And that's Le'alacha bin Pasken in Shulchan Aruch, Kuf Kafhet, Siman Kuf Kafhet, Saif, if I'm not mistaken, Kaf Gimel 23, and also the Shulchan, the Mishnah Burura, in Siman Katan Peitet. Not to look, the congregate not allowed to look in the hand of the Kohanim while they're doing the blessing. Now, when Birkat Kohanim should say, in Eretz Israel, Birkat Kohanim been said every day, during the day, not at night. Why? Because in the time that Beit HaMikdash was exist, the Kohanim used to bless the Jewish people straight after they finished to serve the Korbanot, and that was during the day. That's the main reason that's the main reason that Birkat Kohanim is during the day. In an Eretz Israel, they say Birkat Kohanim every day, every day of the year. Now, come question, how come that in a diaspora, they say only in a Musa of Yom Tov? That's mean in a Musa, in a festival, the Kohanim in a, in a, in a, in a and the diaspora say Birkat Kohanim. And they explain that the main reason for it, because we are in the diaspora and we're not in Eretz Israel, we don't have that happiness. We don't have the simha that we're living in Eretz Israel. And therefore, only on a festival when there is really simha and the Musab, that's when they say, Ado, Ado. And I explained it on Thursday night in the show, like this that the Sephardi, even in the Dada Eshpra, they do it every day. They do it every day, even in Dada Eshpra. So what do you learn from here? We learn from here that the Birkat Kohanim in Eretz Israel, it's every day. The Sephardim do it even in Dada Eshpra every day. It's very important. Now, it's very important that the congregation, when they listen to the Kohanim, saying the bracha after every time that they finish, they must say, they must answer amen ken yeratzon. It's very important because amen, el melech neeman. Okay, Rashi Tevot, el melech neeman. And when you say yehiratzon, that you say that those blessings that the Kohanim bless us in a merit of the Almighty, please God, that those blessings should word be we wishing that we'll have them, and we say amen in the name of Akadosh Baruch Hu, El Melech Neeman. That means El is a God, ne Melech is a king, okay? Neeman, that means he's loyal. That means we saying in the name of the Almighty that is loyal, that those blessings will come to us, that we can receive those blessings. And by Ezrat Hashem, that we should all merit to be blessed with all those blessings that the Kohanim bless us, all the brachot that there is in the Torah, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will have mercy and compassion in us, and will send us Mashiach Tzitkenu speedily in our day, that we can stand in Bet HaMikdash, 
and receive those brachot, those special blessings that the Kohanim bless us in Bet Amikdash. Amen. Now I would like to give time for question. To those of you that have question, please unmute the microphone and ask if you have any question, and I try to answer Bez Ratashem. Rav, I'll start off. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to start with a, a question, yeah. and it's always always worried me actually. And uh, you know, it's a very uh, fearsome thing, a responsibility when one is duchening. It's it's it, it 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 is. You feel an energy, and it, you feel awe. Or that uh, that this this is happening, that Hashem is giving blessings, and through our hands. Now, you mention clearly that you cannot look at the Cohen hands when he is doing. I have a question on this. We cover our hands with a talus. Number one. So you're not looking at the hands. Number two, why do you have a talus? Because if the energy comes through the hands and the fingers, what on earth do we need the talus there for? So that was the question. Okay, very good question. So the blessing, that energy that's come, like you mentioned, that you feel it. If you look at your own finger, it can cause you also damage as a coin. So Hazal come and say, cover your finger with a talis. Why? That that energy that you receive to bless the Jewish people and you're sprinkling them, has shalom, don't look at them, so you're not going to harm your eyes. You understand? So it's not a question that the talis is like a chitza between the fingers and the community. No, it's not. No, a, it is number one. It's, it's number one that the Kohani, that uh, the congregation can see it, but also yeah. the Kohen himself can see his own finger because the energy, the prosperity, that special bracha that come, that special light that come, can affect even the Kohen himself. Right, right. And that's why yeah. they covered it. No, thank you, Ralph. That's what I wanted to know. You follow? It always worried me. <laughs> it always worried me that uh, yeah. that's, we, we, the, 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 there's a, a cover, and yet the, the, the energy and the spirit, the, the energy goes through the fingers and through into the community, although there is a cover over the fingers. So, you, so, you, so the same question you can ask like this. When the congregation covered their head, how are they going to get the blessing? Okay, now I want to tell you a secret. If a person, for some reason, can't get to shul, okay, for a reason that he can't get to shul, he's at home, he's mm -hmm. or on a hospital, okay, he can't get to shul, and the koanim do birkat koanim, that birkat koanim reach to him even. The same like it's reaching to Azarat Nashim, to the woman, to bless the woman. Also those people that they're in the house, they couldn't go to shoe for whatever reason, okay? Not because they didn't want, no. If they didn't want, they don't benefit from it. For whatever reason that they couldn't get there, because whatever reason, they don't have a vehicle to drive to shoe, people not feeling well, whatever the case is, but if there was there, there would be a true that blessing, that blessing reached to them wherever they are. If they're at home, if they're in a the hospital. Right, right. Do you understand the strength of Birkat Kohanim? We don't understand what is Birkat Kohanim. And that's what Hazal tell us, that if a person in Birkat Kohanim turns his back to the Kohen, he's talking to someone else, okay, or he's busy, with something else, and he turning his back to the coin, he doesn't get from that energy. 
but you ride there in shul. And this guy in a hospital, or this guy in his house, far away. It doesn't make a difference the distance. What makes the distance is the kavana, the thought. The distance can be from here to next year. If you have the kavana to receive that energy, you will receive that blessing. But if you're too busy speaking to your friend and you're turning your back to the coin, that means that you're not interesting. Kadosh Baruch Hu say in that case, you're not interesting, you're not gonna get from that blessing. So from here, you learn how important is it? How important is it? To stand in front of the Kohanim and to focus. And Hazal tell us that the Kohen shouldn't wear something that's gonna cause the member of the congregate to be busy looking at him. Special clothes that you not get used. Okay? At Yeshiva yes. College, people wear suit, no more clothes, you know? But if a coin come with special clothes with kapota and that, the congregate gonna be busy looking at him and they're not gonna focus on a brocha. <laughs> You're not allowed to go and do it. Why? Because you're going to move the focusing and the concentration from the congregate from the Borah. But if you go in Daven, let's say in Meashari, and everyone wear those kapote, everyone wear that kind of clothes, no, there's no problem. You understand what I'm saying? So the idea mm -hmm. behind it is the focusing of the coin and the focusing of the congregation that they both have to focus. And it doesn't make a difference where he is. A person can stand in the front of the Kohen, in the front of the Kohanim, Duchenim, and he turn and he speak to his friend. You're not interesting. That's mean. Nothing's gonna happen. That you're showing that you're not interesting. So Baruch say, I'm not gonna allow that light, that energy to reach to you. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Any other question? We have a few other there. Any question? While we're waiting for another question, I've got another question for you, Rav. One, one question. A question. The, and this is very important. The movements. A movement to the right when we're speaking to the community and a movement to the left when we're speaking to Hashem. I think it's important for you to explain the significance of that because I know when we when we use Daven the Amida and we, we, the whole thing is to go to Hashem's right. Hashem is like in front of you and it's almost like you're going to his right. Our left side is to Hashem's right side. He's in front of us, facing mm. us. So it's almost mm. Mm. that. And, and, and um, what is the significance of that? The significance of, of us, when we speak to Hashem, we move to the left. Hashem, Yishmerecha, to the left. Then what is the significance of going to the left? When we speak to Hashem. Okay, so the significant is, is, where, is what you're doing, like the hand is, like I explained, it's like a sprinkler. And you basically, with your hand, you sprinkling all over that energy to the people on the left, the people on the right, the people that's far away, the people that cannot come to have the brocha in the shul. So what you're saying basically, Hazal constitute for us why to move, to move it to every place that basically that in the front of you to bless them. You understand it's what I'm way, saying? Yes, if it's way, to the front, if to the left, or if to the right. Say that? Right, right, right. Okay. So your energy, so is the energy that's coming from heaven to you and going out like a sprinkler everywhere can spread all over. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure, pleasure.
Any other question, Rabotai? No, no more question. Good. Okay. I would like to wish everyone here a beautiful, a beautiful. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I have a question. I have a question. Hilton, Hilton, uh, I'm not, I can't read very fast. You can ask. Just unmute yourself, Hilton, please. I can't hear. Okay, you can't hear me? Okay, but as I read the question. Hilton asked if a person in a hospital and between them, there is few different shoe from which direction so Hilton all the brachot come into you in a hospital and by Ezrat Hashem I would like to take the opportunity to wish you refuah shlema el na refanala el na refanala but please God you're going to be released from the hospital as soon as possible and the merit of all the blessing of the Kohanim and every shul that's surrounding you that means that the blessing come from all over, as long that you have the kavana, okay, that to receive the blessing and not to ignore it, especially. I said that, Hilton. I hope that you I explain myself. Okay, Rabotai, it's another week. Be'ezrat Hashem, I would like to wish you a beautiful a week ahead. Be'ezrat Hashem, that we should all merit to learn more Torah, to understand more Torah to get blessed more by the Kohanim, and by Ezrat Hashem, we'll meet on Thursday night on Shaur and Parashat HaShavua. Thank you for joining us. And no have mind. a great week okay. ahead. Have a good night. Thank you for joining us. Hope that you enjoy it all. Good night. Thank you, Rob. It's beautiful. Thank you.